In this video, we'll take a look at the duct system that conveys sperm to the outside of the male's body. So we know that sperm are produced in the testes and that the testes are compartmentalized into lobules. Each lobule contains a seminiferous tubule and the seminiferous tubules, that's where sperm production takes place. So as sperm are produced in the seminiferous tubules, they get emptied into the reedy testis. The reedy testis is just a maze of channels and it collects all of the sperm that were produced by the seminiferous tubules. And so if the testis has 250 to 300 lobules, each one of those lobules containing at least one seminiferous tubule and up to four seminiferous tubules, basically what we need to do here is we need to funnel the sperm into one tube and that's going to be one muscular duct and so the reedy testis is a pooling area that collects sperm from hundreds of seminiferous tubules and the way that the sperm get out of the reedy testis is through these efferent ductules these efferent ductules there's about 12 to 15 of those they convey sperm into the epididymis and the epididymis is this structure that looks like it's lying right on top of the testis. The epididymis has three regions. There's the head of the epididymis. That's where the efferent ductules are um, leading into, going into. And then the head of the epididymis is continuous with the body of the epididymis. And then the distal portion of the epididymis is known as the tail. Let's take a closer look at the internal structure of the epididymis using a different picture. Okay, so here's the picture from our book. We can see the seminiferous tubules in yellow, the reedy testis in light brown, and we can see the head of the epididymis, uh, this area. Let's take a closer look at that. Do you notice how the head of the epididymis contains um, these muscular tubes that are conveying sperm into a single muscular tube? And so we can see that this muscular tube that's on the outer periphery is the common receptacle for all of these individual uh, ductules. And so eventually what will happen is that one tube will receive all of the sperm and the rest of the epididymis, like here you can see the body of the epididymis, is just that one tube. It's called the duct of the epididymis. The duct of the epididymis is going to be the one tube that contains all the sperm that were produced in the testes uh, that makes up the head and the tail of the epididymis. As far as the function of the epididymis, you can think of it as a storage site. This is where the immature sperm are stored uh, and mature. It will take about 20 days to go from the head of the epididymis to the tail of the epididymis. And during this storage time, the epididymis nourishes sperm, the sperm become modal, and the only reason for sperm to leave the epididymis is ejaculation. And so, in other words, at the time of ejaculation, sperm are going to be moved from the epididymis into, basically this is a continuation of that same duct of the epididymis, but now it's called the ductus deferens. Uh, other than ejaculation, the sperm just stay in the epididymis. If ejaculation does not occur, if sperm don't leave uh, by that means within uh, a few months, what will happen is the cells of the epididymis will reabsorb the older sperm cells. The ductus deferens carries sperm up into the pelvic cavity, it carries sperm up near the bladder. And so taking a look at this picture, I can see that the ductus deferens is traveling up and it's going to become part of a larger structure. And so this is the larger structure that I'm talking about. It's called the spermatic cord. The spermatic cord contains the ductus deferens, but you can see it also contains blood vessels, nerve supply. It's encased by a connective tissue coating. And the, so the spermatic cord is what's going to uh, move up into the pelvis by the bladder. Let's take a closer look at that. Taking a look at this model, we can see the ductus deferens on the right and on the left, traveling from the epididymis up uh, to the pelvic girdle. And we can see the ductus uh, deferens is traveling near, this is the urinary bladder. 
Now it never enters into the urinary bladder. Taking a look at the ductus deferens, you can see that it travels around to the posterior or uh, back surface of the bladder. Okay, so here's the posterior surface. Let's get rid of the pelvic girdle, make it easier for us to see. Here's the bladder and here's the um, ductus deferens. So notice how the ductus deferens gets really large at the distal end, that's known as the ampulla. And at the ampulla, what will happen is the ductus deferens is gonna merge with another gland called the seminal vesicle. This is the seminal vesicle. I'm gonna talk about that gland in a different video. But as far as the duct system that conveys sperm to the outside of the body, what happens is the ampulla merges with the seminal vesicle to form what's called the ejaculatory duct. So let's get uh, rid of the seminal vesicle on one side just so we can see this better. So here is the ampulla of the ductus deferens. Here is the seminal vesicle. And here you can see the two are merging to form the ejaculatory duct. And so I have the ejaculatory duct highlighted and the ejaculatory duct is going to penetrate through the prostate gland. So the prostate gland is being made transparent here so that you can see that these two ejaculatory ducts, one on the right and one on the left, are emptying into the urethra that's passing through the prostate. So let's hide the prostate gland so we can see the ejaculatory ducts emptying into this region of the urethra that's passing through the prostate, that's called the prostatic urethra. In a male, the urethra has three regions. So backing off of this a little bit, the prostatic urethra is the uh, proximal portion of the urethra that is um, just below the bladder and passing through the prostate. And then distal to that is a region called the membranous urethra. The membranous urethra passes through the pelvic girdle. And so if we put um, musculature back into this model, we would see that's where the, um, the membranous urethra is passing through the pelvic floor basically. And then notice that the urethra is entering into the penis. It's entering into this uh, column of erectile tissue, which we'll talk about in a different video. So let's, um, let's make that transparent just so you can see how the urethra is gonna pass through. This is called the corpus spongiosum. And that region of the urethra is called the spongy urethra. And that would be the distal portion uh, where sperm leave the body. So the urethra has three regions, the prostatic urethra, membranous urethra, and the spongy urethra.